Guten Tag and welcome back to Vox Terra. Today I want to share with you three awesome, three fantastic citations to help you have these talking points, these important bullet points in mind going forward regarding the history, the knowledge, the long-term knowledge that, that many people have had that the excessive burning of fossil fuels would indeed alter the composition of the atmosphere, resulting in the trapping of heat, heating our planet, and then shifting and throwing off all of our weather systems, bringing us to this, what is now called a climate crisis we are in today and heading for worse in the future. And it's important we get this story down because as our climate destabilizes, people will become stressed People will want answers and people will wonder what to do. And stressed people are often given to listening to bullying, what I'll call bullying macho voices. But it's those same bullying macho voices, in my opinion, my humble opinion, that have gotten us into this mess. Because those are primarily the voices of the climate denier, climate dismisser, defender of petrochemical fossil fuels, and defender of the what do we call the war machine or the military industrial complex or business as usual? Other eyes, instead of looking at the moat in thine own eye, instead of looking at what your consumer capitalism at home is doing. So it's important we get this story straight so as things get more stressful in the future, people are not given to repeating these same mistakes. So I'll be studying to NASA the U.S. Energy Information Administration, as well as Scientific American. And hey, if you got any criticisms of those sources saying it's part of some big government conspiracy, look, it's the really the opposite, au contraire, mon frere. It's hard. It was a lot of work for me to dig in and find this for you. Because the nature of the beast is that fossil fuels, petrochemicals are a powerful, powerful industry with a lot of influence in our government. The current warming trend is of particular significance because it is, get this, unequivocally the result of human activity since the mid-20th century, studying NASA, proceeding at a rate that is unprecedented over millennia. Now, I want to highlight that unprecedented over millennia because you're often going to hear people try to say when they're arguing fossil fuels defense, you know, Mother Nature cycles, it's cycling. Unprecedented over millennial. The heat-trapping nature of carbon dioxide, which is one of the main greenhouse gases let go of in the burning of fossil fuels, was demonstrated in the mid-19th century. NASA, mid-19th century. And, and carbon dioxide from human activity is increasing more than 250 times faster than it did from natural sources after the last ice age. These greenhouse gases have increased substantially, according to the U.S. Energy Information Administration, since large-scale industrialization began in the mid-1800s. Large-scale industrialization began in the mid-1800s. Most of these greenhouse gas emissions, or heat-trapping gas emissions, were carbon dioxide from burning fossil fuels. In 1824, Joseph Fourier calculated that an Earth-sized planet, an Earth-sized planet, at our distance from the sun, ought to be much colder. He suggested something in the atmosphere must be acting like an insulating blanket. So it was in 1824, scientists began to piece together that it must be the atmosphere trapping heat in. So we're not as frozen as Mars, or as cold as Mars, rather, or similarly, or colder than we are. And it was in 1856 that Eunice Foote discovered that blanket, showing that carbon dioxide and water vapor in the Earth's atmosphere trap escaping infrared heat, or infrared radiation. 1856, carbon dioxide and water vapor. And remember, as we heat our planet, we, in quotes here, there is now more water vapor in the atmosphere, or the water cycle is increasing due to that heat. Those hotter ma air masses retain more moisture. In 1860s, physicist John Tyndall recognized the Earth's natural greenhouse gas effect and suggested that slight changes 
slight changes, mind you, in the atmospheric composition could bring about climactic variations. See, so now we're beginning to understand you change the atmosphere, possibly through the burning of fossil fuels, you're going to change the climate. Now, combining NASA and Scientific American, quoting from Scientific American at first, in 1896, the Swedish scientist Savante Arrhenius published a new idea. As humanity burned fossil fuels such as coal, which added carbon dioxide gas to the Earth's atmosphere, we would raise the planet's average temperature through the greenhouse effect. That's why in the old days, when I was much younger, this heating of our planet by burning fossil fuels, scientists called it the man-made greenhouse effect. And then in our neighboring planet of Venus, with, with a lot of greenhouse gases, nothing to do with fossil fuels, probably volcanic activity and other, they have what's called a runaway greenhouse effect, which is what hopefully we're not bringing on we, in quotes here, are not bringing on ourselves. In 1938, Guy Callender connected carbon dioxide increases in the Earth's atmosphere to global warming, which is why after it was called the man-made greenhouse effect, I began to hear it being referred to as global warming because the overall globe is warming. From Scientific American, that last quote was NASA, in the 1930s, people realized that the United States and the North Atlantic region had warmed significantly during the previous half century. In 1941, there was a scientist that discovered the, the changes in the Earth's orbital characteristics also affecting climate, but that's not what we're dealing with right now. That's what brought on our last ice age. Right now we're dealing with changes in the Earth's atmospheric composition. In the 1950s, a sharp increase of government funding, this is from Scientific American, brought about new studies that showed that carbon dioxide could indeed build up in the atmosphere and should bring global warming. So here was more confirmation. Painstaking measurements, quoting Scientific American, painstaking measurements by C.D. Keeling, and that's a big name in climate science, Keeling, drove home the point in 1960, showing that the level of gas was in fact rising year by year. So there you have it. The understanding that a heating planet is driven by this excessive burning of fossil fuels because it is made thicker, the Earth's blanket basically, to put it in kind of a nutshell for you, has made thicker or more heat trapping the Earth's bl atmospheric blanket, has been known about going back to the eight, mid, you know, 1800s. And then what we're dealing with now is the result of ignoring these warnings that have been intensifying over the decades. And they've been ignoring, in my opinion, due to the power and influence of the fossil fuel industries. And what you should keep in mind is the power and influence of every industry is, is you know, multiplied through our society and affects every issue that we're dealing with. So if you keep that clear in your head, you know, as things get more stressful and, 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 harder, you know, human survival becomes harder due to this destabilizing climate. Remember, don't start blaming just other people or ethnic groups or that kind of thing. You, you want to blame the system we're dealing with and our own, I guess our own, you know, human failings to, to give in and cooperate with these bullies and, and, and put our heads, you know, bury our heads in the sand and ignore what's right in front of us. So I hope you found this video helpful and, and you know, you've got some great talking points and some excellent citations you can take with you. And if you did, please make sure you're subscribed, you click the notification bell, you're liking, commenting, and until next time, peace be with you.